Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live. I am Wendy Lai. In this edition... Ghana Union of Traders declares strike effective September 1. Gusi Tunnel joins NDC flag bearership race. German Chancellor Angela Merkel arrives in Ghana for bilateral talks. And the UK to increase its military support to Nigeria to help protect its citizens and British workers in the country from terror attacks. Let's start now. We focus on politics and the Greater Accra Regional Women Organizer of the National Democratic Congress, Felicia McBoy, has retained her position after pulling 59 votes of the total valid votes. She called for unity to bring back the party in 2020. Felicia McCoy pulled 59 votes to beat her main contender, Lucy Riosebi, who had 44 votes. Jessica Breimer also emerged as a deputy women organizer for the Greater Accra region after defeating close contenders. Thomas Ashong, who is the incumbent Greater Accra Regional Youth Organizer, retained his position after beating two others with 65 votes. Alhaji Mohammed was elected deputy regional youth organizer after he garnered 67 votes. The newly elected executives were sworn into office. As for our law, Mr. So help me Both the women and youth organizers elect promised to work hard to bring back the NDC to power in 2020. It's about NDC. So I once again thank all the women in the region, thank my opponents. And tell her I have a whooping hands. Together we boot. They should all come on board for us to work hard to bring NDC back to power 2020. The election is over. There is no Afutu camp, no Ashok camp, no Yima camp. But together with the two contestants, we'll come together and fight a common goal of winning election 2020 for our great party, the NDC. Adekuka is Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the NDC. The vision is that NDC must grow from strength to strength and that NDC must win 2020. So both of them, all the aspirants, have the same message. One has won and we all have to come together to support each other, support the one who has won for us to move forward in the right direction. The NDC party is expected to hold elections for the remaining regional executive positions on Saturday, September 1. Some of our headline stories, an NDC stalwart Gusi Tano has officially declared his intention to contest for the NDC presidential election. Gusi Tano, one-time aspirant on the ticket of the National Reform Party in the 2000 elections, declared his intention in a video on social on his social media handle. <laughs> Fellow Ghanaians, while we may come from different communities, different political backgrounds, and different homes, ultimately what unites us is that we are Ghanaians and we all want a more prosperous and just Ghana. This desire cannot remain at the level of speeches, but must be demonstrated in practice and show in our lives, in the well-being of our children, in the well-being of our families, and the well-being of our communities. The dream of a prosperous Ghana that we all seek was the basis of our fourth Republican Constitution and informed the founding principles of the National Democratic Congress. These principles of social justice, accountability and development must manifest practically in universal health care, free education, 
social housing and all the things that allow people to have a social safety net that improves their lives. They are founded on our belief in the entrepreneurship of our farmers, traders, business people and inventors and in the vibrancy and productivity of our working and professional classes. They must be supported by policies developed and implemented by a serious visionary and disciplined leadership. These principles must go beyond just mere slogans. They must be captured in concrete programs that will see qualitative growth, ensuring secure livelihoods in a new and prosperous Ghana. Our society must be mobilized to confidently analyze and resolve the wide range of social political problems rooted in our historical position in the global economy. This must become the central objective in our national, political, and economic effort, spearheaded by an awakened mass movement led confidently by our dear party, NDC. It is to pursue these objectives that I consider it an obligation and duty to contest the NDC's presidential primaries. I believe that a renewed and revitalized NDC will have the values, the organizational potential, and vision to lead Ghana to realize the dream of the Fourth Republic. Over the last 10 years, I have quietly worked within the NDC to develop the political and organizational structure of the party to do these things. It is time to move that agenda to the national level. We must come together to achieve this goal. We have a choice. I remain forever in the service of Ghana. My name is Augustus Guzi Tam. So we're still staying with the NDC. Yesterday they held the Greater Accra Regional Elections and some issues came up thereafter. There were reports that went viral that the NDC had annulled the results of the Deputy Youth Organizer position. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak to Adekoka, who is the NDC Regional Chairman for Greater Accra. Good afternoon, sir, and thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Now, outside the elections, news came out that the party had annulled the results for the deputy youth organizer elections. Can you confirm this and what exactly led to that? Well, good afternoon. Uh, I just saw a, a, a letter signed by the national organizer that the deputies' uh, elections have been annulled. Uh, I'm here to understand the reason behind that. So what does this mean? Are we sticking to what the party said or the information that has come up? Well, I'm not to understand what went into the uh, decision to annul that. But if I look at the constitution of the party, it says two members must be elected at a, at a conference. And what they are talking about are the guidelines. So if the guidelines is in conflict with the constitution, the constitution supersedes the guidelines. So that's why I've said I'm here to avail myself with the reason behind the anomaly. So until that stage, we have to have the, the proper interpretation of the constitution and the guidelines. So that it is a conflict. So once we, we are able to understand what the conflict is, uh, then we can find solutions. So as far as I'm concerned, the elections have been done. And um, uh, they've, they've been sworn in. They've been, the, 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 uh, 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 people have been declared winners. And so in the, anything, we have to go to the next executive committee to iron this stuff out. All right. Now let's move to your event of, for this weekend. Preparation so far. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, it will be taking place at the central cafeteria of the University of Ghana. Everything is in place, and uh, delegates are ready to move in probably tomorrow evening or Saturday morning. And um, we will then uh, 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 see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I have been speaking to Adekoko of the NDC. Let's still stick with politics and away from the NDC. 
and the trending story here. The founder and leader of the All People's Congress, Hassan Ayarga, has condemned his boys for attacking a journalist from the Ghana News Agency at Boko in the Upper East Region. Now, the APC leader, however, demands a retraction and an apology from the journalist on an earlier report that he was involved in a batik tie and die deal. Over the weekend, reports were rife that the journalists from the Ghana News Agency have been attacked by Hassan Ayariga's supporters for allegedly publishing false news. In the story, the journalists alleged that a fabric producer, Adam Sawal, had attacked and assaulted Hassan Ayariga at his home a day to the Edo Ada celebrations. The journalist, Jerry Azanduna, who opened up to TV3 for the first time after the incident, accused Ayariga and his boys for more treating him. The, the man asked me again, do you know the, what the story you wrote about my assault has caused me? So I was op about to open my mouth to explain myself out. Oh, when I just say a word, I, just about, I was just about to say a word now. They jumped on me, beat me, they beat me mercilessly. Some were holding shovels and other things. He hit me left and right, so I fell unconscious. Until the army commander who is in charge of the Boku area, he came in. So when the man came in, he asked who is lying down, and then they said, oh, there's a journalist who wrote the story about the Asana Yaga. So they are beating him. So the army commander quickly put me inside his car, drove me to the police station, and I made a police report. And then he took me to the hospital, and I went and sick for treatment. The founder of APC, Hassan Yaga, says he regrets the action of his boys. I am not happy of it, and uh, I think that the act by my party member was not the best and uh, i apologize on behalf of my party members but then i am still waiting for my the behavior of the journalists is not the best at all but he was quick to refute claims in an earlier report put out by the journalist in the story the gentleman even said that i confirmed that i was beaten to the ground seriously i i i, I don't know what kind of journalism and journalists we have here in this country who think that because they have the power of the pen they can destroy the integrity of people with just three four paragraphs today i'm told that the gja of full money has again issued a statement saying that hassan ayariga has hired boys to beat a journalist come on come on mr alful I think you are beyond that. Don't, don't, don't join those people who write anything for people to read. To some other stories, and President Ekufado has launched the implementation of a national integrated e-waste management program under the Act 917 of the Hazardous and Electronic Waste Control and Management Act to control and manage electronic waste in the country. The launch paves way for the construction of an e-waste recycling plant at Abubulushi. Ghana signed the Hazardous and Electronic Waste Control and Management Act Act 917 in 2016. E-waste has become a major global problem with an estimated 40 to 50 million tons of e-waste generated annually. Ghana has over the years served as a final destination for e-waste and the implementation of the act is seen as a catalyst to deal with the menace locally. This legal framework requires producers and private importers to register with Ghana's Environmental Protection Agency and pay an advance eco levy for electronic goods imported. The government, through Mercy, has signed the agreements to the German government to manage e waste. The first agreement is with KFW, a financial institution, to build an e waste holding center that will store all the e waste that will be purchased from dealers at a price equal to or higher than what they will get after using crude and unhealthy methods of recycling currently seen at Abu Boshi. And this e waste will be stored in this holding center that will be built in Kabinya. A recycling plant expected to recycle electrical and electronic waste materials into final products will be constructed at Abu Boshi within the next 18 months. From Monday, 1st October 2018, 
The operationalization of Act 917 will begin with the collection of the advanced recycling eco fee on all electrical and electronic items from all exporting countries. Construction of the integrated e-waste recycling facility will also commence in October this year. To the implementing agencies, as you embark on this important task, please remember you need to carry the people with you. An e-waste value chain is expected to be implemented across some selected regions where a considerable number of informal collectors, dismantlers and recyclers will be located. You're still watching Midday Live. The Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Angela Merkel, is expected in Accra this afternoon upon an invitation by the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Ekufadu. Chancellor Merkel will be accompanied by the Federal Minister for Economic Cooperation and Development, Gerd Müller, and a high-level business delegation. The visit will focus on economic cooperation and also on promoting investment and business in Ghana. Chancellor Merkel will participate in a business dialogue to facilitate exchange on the prevailing business environment in Ghana. The visit will also be an opportunity to discuss and take stock of the G20 Compact with Africa initiative launched in June 2017 in Berlin under Germany's G20 presidency. The Compact with Africa aims at bringing more private investments to the 10 African partner countries, amongst which Ghana is a front runner. Uh, Chancellor Merkel and the Vice President of Ghana, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, will jointly hold a business roundtable to discuss bilateral trade as well as investment opportunities and projects of German companies in Ghana. Later in the day, Chancellor Merkel will meet with the young Ghanaian entrepreneurs and founders of initiatives and startups to explore avenues for solving Ghana's challenges through technology and the entrepreneurial spirit. This visit underlines the strong and deepening partnership between Ghana and Germany. The visit is a first to be undertaken by the German Chancellor to the country since 2004. And my colleague Nana Kwekwedia is our presidential correspondent. He joins me via phone. Hello, Nana. Hello, Wendy. Now, from the information we have received, German Chancellor Angela Merkel will arrive this afternoon. Can you tell us the specific time she will be coming and the itinerary for today? So the German Chancellor is expected to touch uh, down in the country around 12.20. Uh, she'll be received at the airport by the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Balmia. Uh, we understand she's in, actually. Uh, uh, she just arrived at the at the presidency. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm I'm understanding. I can see uh, her vehicle coming in. I understand she just touched down, and uh, the boy is just leading her to uh, the presidency right now. And uh, then let me give you the the rest of the right now, uh, Wendy. Uh, press briefing uh, after a bilateral talk, talks with the president, which will take place around 12:45. Uh, around 12:50, a press briefing. Uh, for both the German and Ghanaian uh, journalists. Uh, both countries' uh, journalists will be allowed to ask some few questions. Then around 3.45, uh, she'll be heading towards uh, Kempiski for a roundtable on compact with Africa and bilateral reform and investment partnership organized by the delegations of Germany, industry and commerce uh, in Ghana. Uh, she'll be at the Osu Impact Hub also uh, somewhere at 4.30. And she's expected to depart the country around 6.40 uh, tonight. So she's, she'll be spending approximately uh, four and a half hours in the country. And she'll be heading to, to, to Nigeria. This is part of a three-day uh, Africa nation tour, which she's already visited Senegal. And she's expected to leave Ghana to visit Nigeria next. We're also told that uh, the president will be leaving for China later today. Can you give us um, some information on what exactly the focus of his trip will be? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's rather tomorrow. Uh, the president will be leaving uh, to China tomorrow and not today. Uh, he will take part in the Africa-China 
uh, business summit, and he will also be paying a courtesy call uh, at the invitation of the uh, uh, German uh, uh, president. So basically, that's, that's what will be happening tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you very much, Nana Kwekudia, for that update. You're still watching Midday Live. Time now to hand over the microphone to you and take your views on what do you think. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is visiting Ghana today. As a result of the increasing numbers of illegal African migrants entering Europe, discussions are expected to center on migration. Today on What Do You Think? I'm asking Ghanaians what they think we can do as a country to prevent illegal migration. We are essentially pushing people out of the country because of desperation. Nobody wants to leave their hometown or their home country. Even the uh, African diaspora who are abroad are always looking for opportunities to come back. I myself am one. What has prevented people from coming back is the conditions that they come and meet when they get here. So many of my friends have returned to Ghana, tried to return, and after about a year or two of frustration, they go back. A specific type of frustration are you talking about? They try to buy property, they find that the title is not clear. The same land has been sold three times by lands department. Uh, they try to open a business in Singapore. You can open a business in one day. It's a one-stop shop. In Ghana, you have to apply for so many different licenses. Before they give it to you, they want to take something. They, they want you to give them some Coke and Fanta. I myself have been to uh, Europe before. I have my visa. But somewhere along the line, I overstay. Why did you migrate? You should set up jobs for the youth to be employed. And then if you're going for a visit, try to get a visa and then maybe visit and then come back. Because Ghana is good. If you don't have a job there, please. Or if you don't have a stay there, don't go there. We have to create jobs. When we create jobs for our citizens, the Ghanaians, and they can get jobs to do, I don't think they'll travel outside. There are a lot of people who are working, but they still prefer to travel to Europe. Somebody is working in Ghana, you can work for almost 60 years, or after your pension, you don't have place to lay down your head. But as you are working, if we have policies in place, it can be taken from your salary as you are working for some time. When people go outside, they, they have that. But here we don't have. So people prefer to go outside. Renting is very expensive, you see. And it's not only that. Your child education policy is also one. People are having their daily bread here. I hope they will not say that they will go outside to go and work. They will focus on the uh, country and do whatever they can get so that they can feed their family. So I hope if they create more jobs, it will help. I think it's very simple. Our system that we have here is not working. So one, we have to make the system work. And two, our parents who are due for pension should also go on pension so that the young ones can take over. And the system, we pay for electricity. You don't get it as you have to. You pay for things and they are not working. Yet you pay. So the system has become so hard. Another platform for you to air your concerns is the MTN video report. And this afternoon, our citizen journalist Yakubu Idi highlights the flood issue as Batanyiri in the northern region. This route is a link between Nanton Kuru and Batanyiri in the Savlugo Nanton district. Pedestrians who want to cross the route will rather park their bicycles and their motorbikes before they can cross. In fact, most farmers in Batangina and Nantokoro will do cross there to farm. People cannot cross to do their daily businesses unless they park their machines and cross to their destinations. When they are back, they pick their motorbikes again. Yakubu Idi, Batanyere. Just like Yakubu, you can also send your video report via a WhatsApp platform 0551 This is still Media Live.
Thanks for staying. Let's do business. And the meeting edition of the Women in Food and Agriculture Conference has opened with a call on government and stakeholders to support women groups in agriculture. Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture Babangi Sagri implored women to take advantage of the many interventions by government to promote agriculture. Women are mostly involved in both crop and animal production at subsistence or commercial levels, working either on their own as unpaid workers on family lands or on some agricultural enterprises. They are just as efficient as male farmers. However, due to lesser control over resources such as land, access to credit and other interventions, women farmers tend to produce less yields. Team lead of AgriHouse Foundation organizers of the conference, Alberta Echa Akusa, said it was a collective responsibility for all to encourage women and young ladies to enter into agriculture. Well, it's also to uh, draw inspiration and then encourage more people to, especially women and young ladies who are trying to find their foot in the business sector, to look at agri as a major alternative and basically get into it. Deputy Minister of Agriculture in charge of food, Babangi Sagri, advised women to access some of the available interventions by government. Ghana Exim Bank is one of the avenues that can give credit to some of these women, especially those who are in products that have to do with exports. Then the Maslock is also working hard to mobilize money so that the women who are engaged in agriculture can have access to this credit. The Women in Food and Agriculture Conference is aimed at creating a common platform for all agri-based female groups to discuss issues affecting the sector. The conference will be climaxed with an awards ceremony in March 2019. To other business stories, and the Institute of Energy Security, IES, has stated that there is a high tendency fuel prices may not change despite fears of an increment in the coming days. According to the IES, figures show the city has experienced a marginal appreciation against the trading currency. The dollar is going for four Ghana cities, 80 pesos currently, as against four Ghana cities, 83 pesos, in the last pricing window, giving a breakdown of the local market performance. IES stated that although prices of fuel at the pumps experienced a 2% hike in the window under review, some subsidiaries sell at the lowest. The IES market scan showed that Benap Oil sells the lowest priced fuel on the market relative to other OMCs, followed by Frims Oil and Zen Petroleum, adding that other relatively low-cost fuels can be sourced from Pacific Oil, Lucky Oil and Alinko Oil. With the city making some gains against the dollar, the Institute projects that prices at the pump will remain relatively stable. Now you can get interactive on our social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter, and there's more news on 3news.com. To some more stories, and former finance minister said Tepe is assessing the current government, saying there were challenges in the former government. The economy is not doing as much as expected by Ghanaians. He stated that he did not fail in the discharge of his duties as finance minister. He spoke on our current affairs program, New Day. I would expect the economy mm -hmm. uh, to be doing much, much, you know, better. Um, and I, I say this with some modesty uh, because every economy has, you know, challenges. I do not want to rule out the fact that, you know, every government faces challenges. Mm. But my reason for saying that is, uh, first of all, uh, we manage or I manage together with my boss. Um, an economy against the background of further global downturn. Mm. Um, that is changing okay. so globally. Um, emerging market demand, mm. particularly China, Brazil, and India, which pulled the economies down. Right. Uh, we also faced two and a half years 
of disruption in gas supply. Mm -hmm. I always say that now that we have time to reflect, uh, Ghanaians would know that it is not something that could have been resolved mm -hmm. with a magic wand because it involves a soft sea pipeline. Nonetheless, it affected the economy. Mm -hmm. The power outages affected output. Uh, demand became very, you know, sluggish. Mm -hmm. You fail as finance minister? No. You didn't fail? No. Yes. And, and the, the, the evidence is there that most of the work I managed during a crisis. Okay. And I don't want to be praising myself. But let me give you one example. Mm -hmm. Ghana, despite the small size of its economy, did not go into recession. Remember during my time, mm -hmm. a number of African countries with far more resources than mm -hmm. Ghana went into recession, mm -hmm. based on some of the points. Two, we set up, you know, a second evidence, we set up the sinking fund. Mm -hmm. We used 500 mil 550 million, around 500 million of our own oil revenue mm -hmm. to take off bonds that were issued and were paying only interest, right? Um, we could have, given the problems that we have, we could have defaulted, mm. right? Given the fact that we needed resources, we could have turned those resources into consumption. Mm. But you balance the economy against investment, against whatever. Those structures are still in place. As we speak, I have it on authority. My calculation is that the sinking fund should have later about 600 million mm. by now, mm. which could, you know, substantial, it's going to take you know, so you uh, didn't fail? I don't believe Thank that. The Union of Industry, Commerce, Finance Workers, Unicof, has described a shocking a decision by the management of the consolidated bank, Ghana Limited, CBG, to lay off 1,700 workers. General Secretary of Unicof, John Amegashi, noted the development is a breach of confidence by the Bank of Ghana since it has not engaged affected staff on details of their compensation and exit pay. 700 employees of the newly established Consolidated Bank, Ghana Limited, will lose their jobs by the end of September this year. Out of the number, 700 are mobile bankers of the defunct Beige Bank, while 1,000 are former employees of the Royal Bank, the Construction Bank, Unibank and the Sovereign Bank, who were transferred to the CBG under a purchase and assumption agreement approved by the Bank of Ghana on August 1. According to sources close to the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited, the layoffs was part of the business rationalization program of the new bank to reduce its current operational cost of about 60 million Ghana cities per month and reduce staff numbers by a minimum of 1,700. General Secretary of UNICOV, John Amegashi, says the Bank of Ghana must protect the interest of the dismissed staff. We are expecting the government to come to the aid of these workers, make funds available. As much as they are very quick to get funds to establish the consolidated bank, they should be able to get money because they took the decision. They must be able to address all the challenges. So the workers in UT and capital are paid. Whatever is due them, then thereafter we can engage as to how their assets will be matched to repay to Bank of Ghana if they need be. Secretary General of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, Solomon Kote, called on the management of the Consolidated Bank to engage the ICU on the exit package for the affected staff. If there were others who were not full-time employees, okay, but by the nature of their job, they are called as and when they are needed, then Consolidated Bank can look at those class of workers okay, and treat them by their rights. Okay, so as of now, by ICU, we are not in copy of those letters indicating that over 400 to 700 workers are going to be laid off in Beige Capital. You cannot approbate and reprobate when you have told you that you have 60 days for me to take a decision on you. Then less than 60 days, you come back to say, I've taken a decision on you. That would be unfair labor practice. The bank's total branches are also expected to reduce to about 120 from the current 191 under a far-reaching exercise meant to make the state-owned lender efficient.
The Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, has directed its members to halt shipment of goods into the country until their concerns on the cargo tracking note, CTN, are fully addressed by government. The directive is to take effect from September 1, 2018. The day full implementation of the CTN is scheduled to take off. Starting Thursday, August 30, which is today, Guta has also given government a four-day ultimatum to suspend the implementation of the CTN or face a nationwide shutdown of their trading activities. The association comprises over 30 thousand traders who import and trade goods within the country. Some of its members are at the Abosokai Spare Parts Dealers Association, Mobile Phone Dealers Association, Okaishi Shop Owners Association, and Kantamanto Traders Association. The rest are Used Cloth Association of Ghana, Ghana Electrical Dealers Association, Confectionery Dealers Association, Tar Dealers Association, Ghana Shoe Sellers Association, and Wholesalers, Importers, and Shop Owners Association. Also, six different associations that are not members of Guta have declared their intention to join the planned protest to force government to suspend the new system. Meanwhile, the three-day strike by the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders and six other groups ended on Wednesday, August 29, without any solution. Let's go on the phone and speak to Kwabna Ofosuapia. He is with the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders and they went on strike with their concerns. Let's speak to him now. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for your time. Good afternoon, ma'am. You're fine. Have you ended your three-day strike notice? Yes, like, like we stated, we ended it yesterday with the outcome because it, it appears the objective for the ongoing strike was not achieved because the GRA insists it is still going ahead with the implementation of the CTN. No, I'm sorry, but our action actually had re yielded result, even though uh, uh, it is an unfortunate uh, uh, result, but it has yielded result. I, I don't know, but you were not at a good time meeting this morning because a whole lot of things happened yesterday night and if if you don't know the ctn has been suspended it, it's been suspended till 15th of october for us to sit and properly iron out issues that we have been raising for the past eight months which was not uh, been given proper hearing to that's the situation on the ground today the the system has suspended because of that. Guta has also suspended the intended action on Monday. All right. Well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. that update. Yeah. I have been speaking to the president of the Freight Forwarders um, Association. We'll bring you some more in a subsequent bulletin. Good afternoon and welcome back to Midday Live here on TV3. My name is Anako Jafre with the sports updates. Let's get into the details. And following a recent meeting between FIFA and the government of Ghana officials together with the head of the FIFA CAF liaison team for the Ghana Football Association concerning the situation of the GFA and taking into consideration the subsequent withdrawal by government by Ghana's authorities of the petition to liquidate the GFA, the Bureau of the FIFA Council have decided on August 27, 2018 to appoint a normalization committee for the GFA. As a result, the suspension of the GFA will subsequently not take effect. The normalization committee will be composed of an adequate number of members to be identified by a joint CAF mission to be deployed to Ghana as soon as possible. All members of the normalization committee will have to pass an integrity check to be carried out by the FIFA review committee. The normalization committee will act as an electoral committee and none of its members will be eligible for any of the open positions in their elections. The specified period of which time during which the normalization committee shall perform its functions shall expire when all of the above mentioned tax have been properly fulfilled.
and ahead of the appointment of a normalization committee for the Ghana Football Association, Ghanaian football legends Reverend Osei Kofi and Willie Kluche have told TV3 Sports they are ready to be part of the process of restoring Ghana football to normality. The criteria that they are going to use in selecting the people, unless you push them before you see whether they are men of integrity. But looking at people's faces, I don't think it's enough. But would you suggest that ex-footballers like yourself, Reverend Osekofi and the other legends be put on the committee? I, I think so, because we are going to talk about football. And we, we have played the game. We know the ups and downs that you go through. And for instance, some of us are still in the game in terms of the administration and, and being technical men for some of the clubs. So if we are one or two people are included into the committee, they will give some good technical advice. Why not? So far as I'm a Ghanaian and the little that I have, you know, I only played football. I was a coach. I've been an administrator. I was a studio manager in 1977 because I've been reading the book, Studio Management. So uh, at any time that my country just wants me to come and uh, put in some, give me some inputs, I will do it with what I had to do. On to some boxing news now. World Boxing Organization Super Bantamweight Champion Isaac Bigbe insists he fully fools Ghanaian and has no qualms about representing the country despite his, his reservations about the support he receives. Michael OTJ has more. Dogbe has claimed he is not getting the credit he deserves for reviving Ghana boxing. A member of his team carried a British flag in the ring after his win on Saturday and at least one British newspaper said he is the British world champion you never knew. All of that has led to suggestions that he is not sure where his identity lies. If my identity was at any other place, I don't think I represent Ghana, the London 20th Olympic Games, and then have a horrible experience and still go back to England, have the great life and great everything, go back to America, um, California, great life and everything, and still go back to Ghana where I was treated wrongfully. Do you get yeah. where I'm coming from? So now I'll leave you to judge where my identity lies. The 23-year-old became Ghana's youngest boxing world champion when he won the title in April and has been largely praised back home after his title defense. But he has felt his background has worked against him. He says he is more than happy to embrace both backgrounds. When you talk about Ghana, look, our only supposedly grudge that is between Tim, Tim Dugbe and um, the boxing community but the general public, they are in love with Isaac Dugby. They are the people that keep us going. I was born in Ghana. Ghana is my root. Without Ghana, I don't know where I would have been. A tree has to grow from its roots. So I owe a lot to Ghana because that is, that's, that's my root. I also thank Great Britain. I was raised in Great Britain. It's a privilege, you know, to come from Ghana, live in the UK, school in the UK, do everything in the UK, you know, and for free, it's a blessing. And that's all the sports here on Midday Live. My name is Anako Jaffrey. Good afternoon. News. The UK is to increase its military support to Nigeria to help protect its citizens and British workers in the country from terror attacks. The Nigerian Armed Forces will be giving specialist equipment and training to counter the use of impoverished explosives, improvised explosives devices by Islamist insurgents. On a visit to 
Abuja, Prime Minister Theresa May said tackling the menace from the groups like Boko Haram was in the UK's interest. She has also agreed to a £10.5 million sterling package to help victims of modern slavery. As part of this, the UK will provide counselling to up to 1,700 people who have been subjected to forced labour, domestic servitude and sexual abuse and help to reintegrate into their communities. Next, we have entertainment. And the Ghana Actors Guild has opted for e-voting in its upcoming elections slated for October 27. The technology, according to the Guild's Elections Committee, is foolproof, cost-effective and verifiable enough to check voter rigging. Nominations for persons seeking to contest for positions will open on August 31. Candidates are to pay a non-refundable Filing fees as follows. President, 2,500. First vice president, reserved for females, 2,000 cities. Second vice president, 2,000 cities. Election date falls on 27th of October, 2018. Other positions including treasurer, welfare secretary and national organizer will each attract a filing fee of 1,500 cities. About 2,000 members are expected to vote electronically in the October 27 elections. Ghana Actors Guild is introducing e-voting in this election. This is a result of the experiences that we had in the former elections where people were accused of rigging elections. We think that the e-voting is accurate, no ballot paper printing, that saves the girl cost, instant collation of results. So who is eligible to contest? A person must pay all his dues and a person must be without blemish. That the, we don't have any adverse records about a person. The person must be a member of a committee before the person will be eligible to contest for the high post of what? national executive. The five member elections committee pledged to provide a fair and even platform for all candidates. CEO of eVote Minder, handlers of the e-voting process, Ni Ajete, noted the system is foolproof, adding results cannot be skewed in favor of any candidate. That it can be skewed in favor of a candidate, I think it's hundred percent transparent. Our only interest is to facilitate the process. Should there be any dispute, we tell you what is in the pen. It will confirm what the machine says. Nominations for wannabe national executives will be opened on August 31 and will close on September 21. Meanwhile, veteran actor and producer Beko Sego has petitioned the Ghana Cultural Forum to stop the Ghana Actors Guild from vetting aspirants and conducting elections. The petition presented on Wednesday morning, among other things, states that the tenure of office of the current executives ended April 20. 18. Abeku Sego is a president, was a presidential contender in the guild's last year elections and is threatened to head to court if his petition is ignored. This afternoon, we do have Abeku Sego on the line. Good afternoon and thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Now, why the petition to stop the guild from the ongoing elections, October 27? Well, uh, I'm hearing this for the first time. So you haven't sent a petition to the Actors Guild to stop the elections and have the oh, cultural uh, firm to stop uh, it? I have. I have. My petition is not against elections. My petition is for uh, some officials and co who are holding themselves as an executive or extended executive of the Galaxy of to stop, to stop holding themselves and describing themselves as the executive of the Galaxy of Because we gave them a one year career on 29th April 2017 and it effectively ended on 28th April 2018, and therefore they cannot, um, they cannot be holding themselves 
and describing themselves as the executive of the Ghana Chess Club. And what has been the feedback so far after you presented your petition? Well, I, I, I presented it. I haven't, I'm waiting for the culture forum to respond. And we, we have the information that you're mentioning that if your petition is ignored, you will go to court. Yes, certainly. We have given seven days. We expect um, a reaction within seven days. If we do not um, um, have any positive result, then we may have to go to another level. Now, have you but I trust that I trust that the cultural forum will, will act honorably. Now, aside the cultural forum, let's look at um, those who have ended their tenure. Have you been able to interact with them on your concerns and what has been their feedback? No, I haven't. I, I don't. I don't admit you. Why? Because they, they, on the, what is the locus? They are not the executive. They, they are not the executive of the girl. Why should I? Why should I? I was expecting that in view of what they did the previous year, which ended up in the election of 29th April, they would have gone by the, 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 the objective that all of us met on 16th February 2017 at the Musical Hall and arrived at that where it was agreed that whoever was going to win the election would have one year. And within the one year, they were to give us a constitution rebrand the girls, um, foster unity, and then organize the elections. None of those objectives were met. All right. Well, None of the so objectives were met. So I, 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 and the tenure expired on 28 April, and therefore there was no need to give them that recognition. Thank you, Abe Kusego. He is a veteran actor and producer. And that will be all for this afternoon. I am Wendy Lai. Thanks for watching Media Live. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have a good afternoon.